Okay, so the principle of UV is basically that's why um, uh, milk carton, the Tetra Pak. If you think about when it's uh, when it's uh, built, if you split it open and lie down, basically most packaging. And if they, let's say if you worked on design for uh, uh, bags or this, it's all usually one Illustrator file that gets folded. There is a marking where to fold and to put. Just to show this example, I'll hide the plane. Uh, I'll just hide it for now, just to show it with a cube. I'm just uh, creating a cube, so like what we always had. And if I will go now into my, we're in modeling, uh, UV, you have editors, UV editor. This is the main thing we're going to work with UVs. So I will just show, like always, we're going to be hands-on working. We're going to start wor uh, working on the plane, learn the tools this way. Just a bit of an overview of it. So if you look at my default UVs, it's like this for the cube, because I just uh, formed it. So. This means that I, it's as if you took this uh, face and opened it up um, into parts. So let's say if I select this face, this is this one. This one is this one. So it goes all of a strip across here. These are all those. And the sides are like as if to uh, wrapped sides, if you see the, these two. So the, the UVs, the idea is actually it's a, it's a map around our model that, that represents the same uh, things that we can flatten it into a texture where we can paint on it. And that's the main thing. Exactly packaging. Every packaging you buy is on this main concept. Now, this one is very easy, straightforward. How do we deal with UVs and how do we make them? Let's go something a bit more complicated than a cube. Maybe just to show, let's just connect a material. Now, we don't have any Im image editing software here, do we? Um, Photoshop, uh, you know what, let's save the time with it because it's just for the idea. Uh, Coral, draw. Coral draw, I don't feel like messing with it now. <laughs> uh, okay, if I will just now, uh, the same as I showed last time, just right clicking, there are different ways, assign favorite material, I'm gonna take a Lambert. So just a bit of a material, control A to get to the attributes. Uh, where are they? Here they are. So Lambert 3, and I will connect here. Uh, let's do something that's more. Connect the ramp. Let's just add a few more colors to the different yeah yeah sure, sure. with what so I just put a material uh, with a ramp so ramp is just a bunch of colors and if I will go back to our UV editor select our object okay now we see our ramp or we sh should see our texture It won't give me this preview now. I guess we do need to put a texture. Let's do it like that. We should have some file. Let's do it with a file. It'll be the easiest. Okay, I will put this blueprints for now. Okay. So, you see, we have this. Uh, I just put the, the what we used for the plane for modeling, just to show. So we have this uh, texture laying out uh, across it. If I will go into my UVs, we have all, every face is represented by a square. Now UVs are double the model. For engines, it's also heavy. It's, it's another thing that it needs to calculate. Uh, so just in, in an overview, you see it's laid out like this. I can also change it now. I can adjust it here, the same tools that I'm using all the time. You see now I'm getting stretching. I can move it around like this. I can also, am I on Slovene? If you see, let's say uh, this one. Now, if I'm not happy with how it's laid out, I want to lay it out more properly. I have, if you look at the UVs, few options. We're going to deal only with one. We have UV automatic, which is, so open this window. Let's tear it off actually to see it. So, so far we just opened this editor. We didn't touch what, how we work with it yet. We will go through it. We first have to make a, a UV. So let's say you might have gotten a model somewhere, or worked on it, you don't have any UVs, it's all one jumble of uh, UVs. Like if you look at your UVs of the plane, they will be like this. If I do automatic, it actually gives me this. It projects, but if you would look through it, and I don't know if I have it on the projection. You see that these projections here? Yeah. These are basically each side that it projects. So this is a six cube 
uh, projection that does from every side and whatever angle it goes it'll hit it so my UVs come out like this and it spreads it around the thing if the image here disturbs me I can right click image and not display the image so I can see it so now every face is actually separate its own box that I can move around doesn't matter that the model stays together I can move this around and position wherever I want so for example I can take this uh, let's say this is the bottom not so interesting till I find the right one this one and if you see if I just shift it with W I can move where my plane is and etc so I can manipulate but this is not good you see now I'm over overlapping because we're working in an engine and we want to be uh, this if, if it's not connected it's more too heavy to calculate so we want to have as much as possible connected the UVs in the box when we had it originally that was perfect it was already everything connected it was a, a, a T because it's a simple object what happens in a more complicated object we'll see how to, to work with them just a few more because we won't use them so the automatic is a very general it does it it does the job good actually you can take very complicated models do automatic you're good to go that's it you're done with UVs but if you want to optimize UVs, do it better, easier to work with, then it gets more tricky, and that's why we will do them manually. Other options we have are, now all those, you can open more settings, I won't go around. You have camera base, so that means if I'm looking through my camera now like this, in this angle, it will project from my angle. So now I made the UVs like this, just for this face. I wanted to do it for everything, so let's do it for everything. Okay, you see now I projected, and you see what I get here in the UVs. It's pretty nice. It's like a 3D uh, yeah. uh, modeling editor is UV editor. You can also get it from here. Windows modeling. All the windows are found here in the editors. You just have to a bit search for them. So modeling editor is UV editor, or from here UV editor, and then I tore it off to have it next to me. So just to think project through camera if you see that made me a whole UVs it looks like a nice uh, this now especially if you're working on let's say a still image a render still image you can just do project from the camera and you're done with the UVs you have actually one-to-one -one, um, uh, pr uh, projection here so this is this projection uh, um, camera based projection so we're, we're actually uh, projecting on the camera this could be if you think about it let's say you have a whole you took a picture in the in the land here uh, you model roughly by the by the the eye because it's a still image and then you can project this image on your model so the whole city would look pretty uh, amazing very easy way next ones are cylindrical uh, let's just show it quickly not we're not going to use it so much um, f8 to go out so cylindrical exactly you have this uh, projection uh, like this and I have all these handles every time I have a projection I have handles that I can wrap it 360 around and you see my UVs change here I don't know what you see on the screen but it's a way for me to manipulate usually not much to do with it and I will show you why because we're going to do everything manual uh, cylindrical planner we're going to use I'm recording it yeah. Uh, spherical, again, a ball, you have all these handles to make it half of it or this for the cube. It's very stupid to do a ball, of course, uh, so we won't. Now let's go to our plane and we'll, we'll, we'll really start exploring what's going on here. Okay. Now I, I, am, uh, I'll do f uh, I am assuming that the principles of this UVs I don't need to really go over so much because we get it, uh, I hope. And where is my plane now? What I showed last time with the model that we're going to make it uh, high poly, this model I didn't really check yet. Uh, maybe, maybe we should, so we do it once we don't uh, for before we start UVs on it. Duplicate this model. So you have half a model on your uh, um, screen, control D. We have it double now. On one of them, and I'll go now to my outliner, window outliner. This will be, you see, so I have the name. I'm double clicking it here and I'm going to call it high poly. And I guess this one, will be low poly. Okay. For the low poly, I'm going to press one. Okay, and then I'm going to take the high poly. If I'm going to uh, press three on it, 
so we're making sure it's on th smooth. And then modify, we, what we did last time, convert um, smooth mesh preview to polygons, okay? We will delete it afterwards. I just want to double check that also your models go. Okay, so this is it. Modify. Uh, yeah, yeah. Another thing, while this is still selected, just so it's going to be easier for us to see, I'm going to right click here, assign favorite material. I'm going to put a uh, Lambert. And then in my attributes, if your attributes didn't open, Control A should be here. Lambert, and I'm just changing the color to red, just so I will see the differences between them. Okay. You manage to? Material. Yeah. yeah. I didn't show yet materi uh, the materials. Actually, you assigned from the hyper shade. This is just a quick uh, shortcut. The reason I'm doing this, my model will pretty much work, but if you see the low poly to the high, uh, where's my outliner? Okay. If I select my low poly, I, you see I see a bit of this red coming out here from all pines. Th uh, this I tested, just make sure when come close, let's say here I already know I will have a problem. This is not fitting well. The, the high poly should be above the low poly. And then, so I don't see this red. It should all be inside. Although this we tested, it does work. I would just do, so maybe I, because I didn't see how your models are done, uh, I would just do a little bit of fixing. So I'm going to take these vertices here. Okay. Another thing, because it's going to be hard to work like this. Let's take our high poly. Let's lock it in a layer. Okay, so I have the high poly selected. We're all with me? The high poly, yeah. And now I'm going to lock the high poly because I won't be able to select it. So I'm just going to go to select it, and then I'm going to go layer in the display layer. Layer, create layer from selected. It opens me a display layer like we did last time. Double click it and we'll call it high. We will delete it soon enough. And I will say display type reference. You can also check the R here, like we did last time. So that means, the same as we did with the image plane, that means I cannot select it now. I can only select my low poly, which is what I wanted to achieve. What I'm pretty much doing now, those of you who have connected it, I'm just moving things a little bit. So my, high po my uh, low poly will cover all the high. When I have it selected, you see it's much more red. When I will not select it, this is more the accurate representation. So I fixed a little problem here. I still need to do it. Uh, you see this part is sticking out, this red, when I'm on, uh, on low. I don't want that. Now, actually, it does work. I, we tried it. It works even like this, but still just to, so uh, let's say I select this point now, and I'll move it a bit out. By the way, when you select the vertices, you can go with the uh, arrow keys to pick walk. So now I, I jumped into the next vertex, right, left. So I'll push this out a little bit as well. Up, and I'll push this up. You, do, you, you don't have to do it. We can also do it later. It's just those areas I know already they're problematic for the baking uh, later on. Uh, covers, wraps all, all the, the high poly model. Yeah? The, now, it doesn't have to be, by the way, the way it was now would still work. It's just, let's say, when we did it in the studio, this part got uh, a bit bad, yeah? So we probably need to add more divisions here. This stuff is going to go over everything again, but let's just prepare it uh, a little bit more. So also notice, when I have something selected, I see a lot more of the high poly. If I will step outside, this is actually how I have it. So I see, I basically mainly a little bit sorted the problem here. I see also here a problem with this wing. So I will just select and then I'll just go vertex and I think I have a vertex here in the middle and I'll push it a little bit out just to a little bit fix this. My model is very rough so it's anyways gonna be a bit. Yeah. I mean, to go over it just to make sure some points and then when we'll bake we'll go back and forth and see problematic areas. But... Uh, yeah, we should do the whole model kind of like that.
And let's just open our UV editor. And you see what I told you where the, where the UVs are all messed up? Because we started with a cube, then we extruded in this. This is the UVs as they are now. Again, this won't be too nice. It won't work. Okay. Easiest way, I can go UV, automatic mapping. Let's just do that to see what it gives us. And you see, it gives me the projections from all sides. And look at my UVs here. This will work. This is now everything by the angle is, is uh, let me highlight it. Select the plane. You have to be selected, yeah. You only see things that are selected in the... Yeah, okay. If you see the first year UVs were terrible, then we did UV mapping uh, automatic. And actually, I have UVs. If I will see... Okay, there is a lot of tools here in the UVs. We will learn them as we go. If you see here this checkered... Okay, if you click it... You should also see it here. I will just... Yeah. You get a checkered board saying UV, so we can see how our UVs are spread. And look at it, it's pretty nice. Everything is actually even. This is good enough, pretty much. The only problem with this, you see, we're done, did UVs, let's go home. Main problem with this is we have, if you look here, we have a lot of uh, separated UVs. If I'll zoom in, you see every square here made its own, these are called islands kind of idea, yeah? There, there are a lot of separate UVs. This takes time for the processor to work with. And also, it's very difficult to paint, although in substance this doesn't really matter, but let's say if you painted this in Photoshop, and if I select now, each one represents, if I go into faces, so we can see it, you see this face, um, let's see, this face is where? This is this face, yeah? And you see I have one, two, three, and then I have another face here, which is this one. And so it's broken. It's not all together. And it's going to be very hard for me to paint uh, because I'll have different parts jumping around. So it's not good for us. And it's also not good in the sense that it's very heavy. We have a lot, a lot of uh, small parts for the UVs. Okay. So won't work because we don't want to uh, we want to have one for the whole plane pretty much we want everything to be together as much as possible we will have the engine separately the wing separately but let's say these are the back wings i think if i press f yeah these are here but for general purposes this will work main thing two things we're losing a lot of empty space here a lot of wasted uh, space for the texture to be painted and uh, also it's going to be he heavy on the processing power because there's a lot of uvs to work so we won't use this way what we're going to do we're going to do this manually and now select your object again in object mode uv planner planner is exactly the same when we did automatic it made all sides planner is side by side and let's open the settings here the cube Okay. Now, because we always like to, let's reset our settings so we know we're on the same. So, planner mapping options, edit, reset settings. It seems to be in the reset. You see all these? Yeah. The, you download this and you connect it as a texture. There, these are even better because you see the numbers and you can spot out where it goes. I usually, I have a template file like this that I always use for all the UVs. But today they gave you this checkered here. You can also go in your material if you want to do it. Let's say just for your example, I don't know why it doesn't preview. If let's say I will assign, uh, no, let's. Uh, I have a material already, so I will just have a color. You can also connect into your color of the material a checker. I'm moving along. We have our planner mapping options. We reset it. Now, if I will have my UV open at the same time, not my outliner. Okay. If I just do it like this, apply. You see, I got it. Here's my plane. Just a little bit distorted. Yeah, it got a bit squashed here. Not so happy about that. Now, the reason why, you see, those are all stretched. They should be squares. They got stretched. So not, uh, I mean, it will work as well. You have here this option, keep image. If we go back to our planner, that's why I didn't close it. Keep image width and height ratio. So if I click this and do apply, 
I need to be on object mode to do that, sorry. Here, apply. Now my UVs, you see they're all squares, and I can see this here, my plane is in the right proportions to fit. So this is what we wanted to do. Now UVs, because they're like, <coughs> they're also the terminology is a lot like stitching, sewing, uh, this, we are taking and dressing this up actually with a, we're wrapping it. Now if we look at this plane, wait, let's make this smaller. Every time you do UVs, you first have to think, okay, how will I do this uh, the best way? Which parts are going? Now, because we have one projection, look at the wings. Everything is stretched. It's not good for the wings. So what I can do is, without separating the model, I can separate the UVs and do them s uh, separately. So for now, what I have is this. Everything I projected from the side. This you need to figure out every time you start with the model, what's the best way to do for this one. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, the wing, I'm going to have it on a separate uh, UVs because the wing is from a top projection. It's going to, the stretching is too much. Some stretching is good, but we don't want to have, we want to avoid. What I'm going to go now is select all this edge. So I'm selecting the edge here, here. Just make sure, maybe I'll press five. So I'm going all around where the wing should be, in one. Now my wing, uh, obviously this part I didn't fix yet. I should have merged these two. I'm going to just do it for the sake of it. I don't want to spend time on modeling. Hopefully yours is built a bit better than mine. Okay. So yeah, I selected all of it, the edges. Now everything you select here also gets selected in the UV editor. So if I notice here, you see that I have it, I don't know if you, how much you can see on the screen, it selected me all this edge around where the wing is. Once we did that, now look, with the UV editor I always work with the shortcuts. All these buttons are existing here, I'm not going to show them here. This you'll find the same buttons that we do. Again, if I go on control, right mouse, no, sorry, sorry, not control, shift right mouse you have here cut UVs okay so these are now we're starting to like we're breaking this off the model is together but we're splitting the UVs so let's just do cut UVs nothing seems to have changed right if we want to see the change uh, so th you did cut UVs okay if we want to see the, the change again control uh, shift and you see here you have to toggle texture borders if I put this on, you see this became a thicker line. Every th place the UVs are cut, I see a thicker line around it. Okay. So we actually cut this uh, wing out. Still everything is connected. We're all good with that? Yeah. Okay. So far so good. Now the next part. Now for me it will be hell to st select face by face every part of the wing or every part. This is gets annoying. What I can do is right click on your UV and select UV. So we, I move to UV mode now, which are the points. And I'll just select one UV point here, or I can select a few like this, from the main object of the, of the plane, the body. And then if I do control, right click, you have this option to shell. So basically what this does, it selects me everything, all the UVs that are connected together. So actually it should select everything but this wing. And it does that. You see the wing is not selected and everything else is selected. So what I'm going to do, I'm not going to touch it in the model. Let's just see that you got it, that you have, so first you cut the, the wing, then you take one UV, control to shell, will select you the whole uh, UVs. I can change this also into faces, I can go control and shift this, so this is, the UV editor is also a very easy uh, tool for selecting parts. Now a lot of times with UVs is to think how we're going to cut this, where we're going to make the seam. So I did a bit of that before, tried it a few times, a lot of times it's about where to cut things. And usually you want to cut points that nobody sees. So it's like in a shirt, or let's say you're doing a character, you would cut under the armpits, because nobody sees it. Uh, you will make your seams that way, that place. If you already have it selected and you're waiting, just press W and move it out of the way. Yeah. Just press W and move it out of the way, so you see that the, the, the wing stayed alone, right? Same thing to this part. 
So again, now mine again is modeled like hell. I don't know who did that. Ah, that was me. You see, I have. You see, this is what I said. We need to fix. If your model has things like this, this should be fixed. And mine does. I'm not even looking at the high poly. I'm just. I already see this is wrong. There is some. Okay, something around there would be okay. Now again, I'm going to select, here it's a bit more tricky. You see, this is from top view. So I'm going to select this edge, this edge, because I'm taking, trying to select all the faces that are looking from top view, because if I will project here from the side, it's going to be... Uh, uh, so I have a bit more here in this part. So I'm going to select this and this and this. This goes to the edge of it. So I will continue here, here, here this one this one and you see it is going a bit these parts are not good for me to select okay I'll do it like this just to be simple so I selected this whole square you see from here and the same thing as we did before all the way around it and again control sorry shift cut UVs once I did that I will have to s deselect outside somewhere turn it right click to UVs select one and then control to shell and move it away so I have this part separated okay now meanwhile in our UV workspace for now we don't care I'm just gonna grab these two wings move them to the side and let's concentrate on this part now it looks like it's pretty good yay great uh, let's put the checker And the checkered is, or if you'll put, is to really show you if they're stretching or things that are not good or proportions are wrong. This will be very important later. For now, I'm just inspecting the model, and I see one problem. If you look at this part, this is actually pretty much a top view from top here, this part, this faces. A and look at my UVs here. It still works, but it's very, very small. There is some distortion. Here is a better example of this. Now no, notice in this example, because we did everything projected from the side, or for the body of the plane, I'm not looking at the wing, we still have these parts that are the bottom of the plane. And here if I look with a checkered, or if I would have put a texture here, I would really see uh, stretching. This is what's called stretching. It's completely, it's going to be completely blurred and looking like, uh, like a really bad, uh, also here I have some problems. So you notice, if I look at the UV map, it's a very, very thin line. It doesn't make sense, yeah? Because the camera tried to project like this, and it got a very small angle, so it put like this. But we still, we like it that this whole model is in one go. Now, a few ideas I can do. I can take this whole faces, select them, project from top, and then stitch them along together, uh, or, or around. But there is a, a very sim a much simpler way. If I take this model now, and let's just look at it together on both sides. The program has this uh, automatic, and it's called Unfold UVs. So let's select one UV, uh, or just select all the UVs like this with a marquee or grow shell. So select everything here on the body only. Yeah. Got it? All UVs are selected. Control, uh, sorry, Shift, Unfold. Now what Unfold does, it tries to sort it out by itself. It's like an automatic, uh, it tries to say, okay, I see that there is no space. Let's just try it. Unfold. And something went really un not nice here. Uh, how many of them do you have pulled off? Just control Z. Uh, let me just undo this. Mine didn't work the way I wanted it. Yeah, it, it will distort. Yeah, uh, how do you do the unfold? Ah, you see, I by mistake selected this part, which I didn't want. Okay. You select all the UVs. Yeah. Shift, right mouse, unfold. Now, notice it gave me a bit of a distorted plane now. But if I look at my UVs now and look at the bottom part, it's a bit nicer. It's now squares. It's pretty okay. This will work super fine for our app, especially because we're working with substance. But let's say now you're working with Photoshop and you're doing this. It'd be very annoying to paint on this kind of like uh, banana-shaped distortion. 
Yeah. Um, Mika has the same problem, like me. Okay. Come in there. L Mika, just look here because I'm going to do the same now as you did. I'm going here and I'm doing everything in the UV editor. I'm not even looking at my model, yeah? And I'm going to go here and go right click edge. So I'm selecting edges. I'm going to double click the outside edge, which I think is this one. Yeah. And it selects me all this uh, edge around. So just double click on the top one. It should be, if you have the toggle texture borders, you would see thicker line. Uh, so it's the outer, outer more one. So when you double click it, it should select you the whole uh, loop. And then I'm going to do control two UVs. And then it selects me the UVs, right? Not any of the other UVs. So after you selected the edges, you do control right mouse to UV and then again to UV. Yes, I have. And then shift unfold. And it went about here. But this already should be a bit better. And let's just check it. Just to double check it, put your checker on. And yeah, you see here, I, I still have distortion. It's not so good. But uh, Now let's say if you want to be more precise with it, for uh, again for this we don't matter, you can also take, just select this face, I'll just show this, don't do it, I, let's say I selected this face, and this face, and this face, and let's say this, I'm just selecting a few, I don't want to select everything, and I can do again UV planner, from Y axis, because it's the top, apply, and you see it just separated it from everything, and it's huge as well, yeah? And I can just go around now and I'll first have to scale it down to be really small, rotate it. I'm using the same QWERTY tools. Rotate it here. And then I would go to where it's missing, which is here somewhere. Now, how do I know which face connects to what? If I will select edges, you see I selected this edge, this edge corresponds to this edge. So I know I need to flip it and then stitch it. If I do that, I will have a much more perfect... Uh, 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 this, for our purposes, because it's substance, less important, Photoshop would be a lot more handy to have it more perfect. So I'm going to just undo, because we will do the stitching of UVs just in another point. And where is it? It's back to place. By the way, when you do another planner mapping, it's the same as cutting the UVs as well. It, it puts them around. So we got this side done, I hope. Yeah. I can have a lot of times in games, the UVs will be one on top of another. And that would mean that I can, I'm saving space on the map, but I have, uh, I have whatever I draw on this side will be mirror on the other side. But let's say we do want to have custom made. The, let's say the reason we want to have custom made is let's say if we're going to bake the lighting or the textures. That won't work if you have it uh, double. So because if you have it all on one side, the lighting comes from one side, both of them will have the shadows drop the same way. So we want to have actually everything as, a, as its own map. So for now, we have this part. Now we're going to go to the wings. And the wings, the same story. I'm going to select them from here because it's easier for me. I already have them separate. I'm going to go into face mode. And I'm just going to uh, marquee select the whole faces. Yeah, yeah just one wing. Okay. We can select them both, uh, but I'll just do it one by one. For uh, We can do it all in one go as well. But uh, let's just do it. I selected the bed. No, I want to select the bigger wing. So I'll do this one. Sorry. Yeah. So this is my main wing, yeah? Open your planner mapping options. So UV uh, planner mapping. Open the options. Make sure your keep image width and height and Y axis because we're going to project from the top. OK. And we press apply. Now it comes huge. You see the squares are different shapes between this we will sort later. We will scale them all to be the same proportions and we will try to fit it. So now you see I got the plane from both sides on top. So get somewhere like this. Now leave it. I'm going to actually for my sake for organization I'm going to go back to UV and I'm going to move this plane out of the way. This is just for being comfortable. And I know these are the wings, right? What we're going to do next is go into our model. We, we all have the wing projected from top. 
Uh, again, here I have a problem. The top, uh, you see it says UV1, the top and the bottom is a mirror, and a flipped one, actually. And I don't want that. I want to be able to paint because I want to bake lighting in this case. If sometimes in games you will actually do everything by half and everything is on top to save space, in our case we won't have as much uh, uh, space. So different uh, case. I'm going to now split this model. So I'm going to select an edge and I'm going to go to the, let's do it from the middle. Double click it. No, that's not what I wanted. I'll do it like this. From the, the edge here all the way to the back edge here. That should work. So I selected this whole ring. I s first selected this one in the middle and then I selected this one. And I think this is the end of it. Yeah. Okay, so we, we basically did the whole ring around it. Once you do that, shift, cut UVs, and then we get the border. I selected from, because I have, you see, I, I know here it's the edge loop. So I selected first this edge, the same as we're doing with face. I select this edge, and then I went all the way around to the end of this line and double click, same as we do faces, and it selects me the whole ring uh, without this cut. Because if you just do double click here, it'll select you also on the, uh, now it does. You see, it selects me on the plane, which I don't want. So that's why I had to start it from here and end it here with this sh sh yeah. You don't, I also don't have a perfect edge loop, so you can also select it manually. It's the same thing. But uh, sometimes you can do it like this. You can also select one here, go all across to this side, double click to save you, you know, so I selected this row, then this one, shift. The same as we selected around the thing and uh, pick walk through it, so. It's the same uh, idea. And then we cut the UVs. We all have them cut? Okay, now this is important. Okay, I'm now going back into UV and I'm just going to select one point here, just one uh, click. Control to shell. And this is just so I can move them separately. See, and I moved it around here. So I have this both parts uh, separated. Just select but one, one UV, not with a marquee, because I will select both, and then just move it out of the way, on top. I'm looking at my UV editor. I have this two, I have my plane, I have two wings. Now, like I told you before, we want to have as many things combined together. This means three objects for the UVs. It's okay, but we want to have it more efficient. We want to actually connect this part to this part, so it'll be like a butterfly. Like as if you took the wing and you open it like a book, like this. So we first uh, do that. There is another, if you look at the buttons here, click this one and you get nice little colors. I, I showed two buttons here, yeah? Let's start with this button. This one, it, it goes into a color. This is supposed to show me the UV stretching, how much stretching I have. Now, if I select one just to show it, uh, and I will... move it. You see if I move it and I'm getting stretching, you see how the colors change of the model? I'm on purpose doing stretching here. I'm, I'm on purpose destroying the UVs. So you see it turned all red and here it's, uh, here it's got enough space, here it doesn't. So this is wrong of course. But if you look at our model it's perfect. Everything is uh, nicely even. There is, uh, the colors are supposed to show you the more stretching. Now it is normal to have stretching, especially if characters, it will always stretch. Uh, but it depends how much and where it stretches. Uh, that's uh, the key. So this is this thing about stretching and, and the resolution of it. Uh, the next thing, which is more what I wanted to show, is the next button, and we get colors. Now, red, bad, rest, good. Uh, <laughs> bad, stay color. So what that means, it means it's flipped. It's like the normals are flipped, the UVs are flipped. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select, you also have probably one flipped, one red one. The red it just means that it's flipped. It's also not bad, but it's just flipped upside down. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to select with the marquee all these UVs. The red one. Yeah, the red one. And if you notice, I have here little happy flipping buttons. If I click this one, it flipped it this way and it turned now blue. So it's a good color. Here on top, you have this two. 
It's like flip horizontally, pl flip vertically. Th it even says uh, flip selected UVs in U direction and V direction. The same in Photoshop, flip horizontal, vertical. So now that I flipped it, I'm pretty cool with it. But another thing I want to do, because what I said is we are trying to have as many, uh, we don't want to have many pieces, although this is not a lot of pieces, three pieces, it'll be four with this one. But we, we want to combine those two together. So what I'm going to do is now go to edges. And you see if I select this edge, this one on the bottom gets marked. So select one edge, and it shows you this is the corresponding edge that can be stitched together or sewn together. Great stitching and sewing. We did so far, we cut the UVs, now we want to know how to combine them. But I could do this, uh, it'll work. But I want to first, because I see it's not really corresponding. This is on the bottom uh, to this. So I would actually rather first position it accordingly. For positioning, I can go select everything like this and go flipping it like we did before. I also have here rotate uh, tools and if you see I'm just rotating like this. I can also use E for rotate uh, and do it like that. So whatever way you fancy. And I'm just aligning it close to it. And I'm just checking again if I, I go into edges. And you see this is nice, they're corresponding to each other. What I'm going to do now, and just to show it, I have this tool, I can select, I go into edges, and I'll select this bottom edge where I see, wait, let's get zooming into it. So this one, and I see this is the corresponding. I can now do here, this button, I think, uh, saw UV tool. No. Ah, this is the tool, sorry, 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 don't do that. We'll show it a different way. Select this one, you can do uh, shift, right click, move, and saw UVs. And if you see what it did, it pointed it, it, it glued it together. Undo. Because it's better for me to do it now in the whole line together. Yeah, because if I do it like this, I have to select them. So let's do this again. Again, edges, and I'm selecting this one. Shift selecting the next one. Shift the next one. And I already see where it's connecting. Shift the next one. Now, I could select this guy as well, but you see it's going to stretch it. It's going to try to um, connect it, and I don't want to. I am enough like this. I'm going to make a butterfly. So uh, I will just select all this one, two, three, four. It automatically selects the other side. Shift, right click, move, and saw UVs. And that's it. We got everything as one part. Alan, also you try the unfold. Let's see what you get. Uh, I'm going to try to unfold this. Just to, to see, nah, didn't really help me much. Although here in the bottom, you see how nice it is now? Wait, let's do undo. You see what I got here? They're really like not so nice together. So I can just, I can just select this middle part, without this guy, the UVs, and do unfold here. It does for everything, I need to change the settings. Okay, let's do for everything, simple. To select your object, unfold should just a bit even it out, make it more uh, uh, nice. And then I will also back to rotate it so I'll see it straight. Uh, let's see somewhere around here. Or like this. Okay, so. I know now I, I did unfold just because there was obviously some stretching here in these parts. Although if I look and inspect it now with a checkered, it looks pretty okay. Yeah, I know, and also with me. And this gets a bit... Uh, look, this is good enough. This works. Sometimes, let's say if you're uh, giving it to a Photoshop person and not in substance and you want it and people will be, ah, it's not straight, it's annoying. There are some more nice tools here. I can select all these UVs. And if I, you see here, this area, this is alignment. So I'm snapping everything by the, uh, by, you know, and then I get a straight line. The stretching is minimal, so nothing really happened. I'm happy with it. I don't care. You know, it's a, it's a, I could have left it as it was before for substance. But if you want to have organized, you can play a bit around just for aesthetic that it looks nicer and it's uh, straight. Uh, the same as I can these here. You have a line to the left, and the left it picks the most further UV, it'll align everything, snap everything to the minimum UV, to the maximum top and bottom. You see these squares are much smaller than these squares here. So what, me, what th this means is that my proportions are wrong. If I would have one texture, 
this will have a lot more detail, a lot more resolution, this will have less resolution. So it might be that this, the plane will look blurry a bit or not sharp, and here I'll have great details. Now this could be useful if you have certain parts that you want to add and, and this, because it's all about optimizing the square. But what I'm going to do now is take this uh, that I know is bigger, and I'm going to scale them by eye, just to match it approximately. And I can do this also by, if I move it around, you see, I can also, there is an automatic way, of course, to do this when we, when we lay it out. But I'm pretty happy with this. If you see, I, I'm just aligning it to, it's, I'm not that happy with this. No. Uh, it's very tricky to move. I'll scale it a little bit. So you should get to something that makes sense scale-wise. And again, I'm doing it by eye, but I could go on a top view and do it more exact, uh, but this should be enough. If I want to do UVs just to a part, I need to select faces. So I selected these faces of the back wing. I'm going to do UV automatic mapping. which is like this. Once it's selected, I can move it out of the way. Now you see the automatic, what's not nice about it is it tore some parts here, some parts there. It's a bit annoying. I could go and stitch them now. I can select this part and stitch it together. This part the same as we did before. Two ways of working. You can also go now and do automatic and say, okay, I'll go to edges. I see this edge goes to here, move and saw UVs. Uh, these two Move and saw UVs. Oop, wrong one. Here I have a flipped UV, so I can do this manually like this, a bit more tedious, but uh, we'll do the, the trick. Here I see these three are aligned, so I'm selecting all three together, move and saw UVs. So this is like a stitching game. So you can just go about like this, like how I'm doing it now, I'm doing it very quick, it's the same way. Uh, I'm just moving along and stitching them. And here I have some mistakes, of course. The way we did it before was better, more accurate for this thing. But after I stitch them all together, I can just go now to shell and unfold. And that should work. Just magic button here at the, at the top. Now that I have it all scaled, let's say I have everything on UVs. This is also for you, Alan, before you go. Magic button. You press this. And uh, magic didn't happen shouldn't be selected. This is to make your layout. Uh, it'll, or it'll try to optimize it in here. It's an automatic way to do it, yeah? Yeah. No, or, or deselect every, uh, anything. Sorry? The tool next to it. Yeah. For the grid, I think this is... Uh, Okay, what happened now is, you see, it automatically tries to put it in the most optimized way into my UV map. Now, this is important because we want to have the biggest uh, uh, usage of space here in, uh, in, the, in the map. Now, one thing we forgot, we're going to duplicate this model. We're going to mirror it, right? 
so we're going to have more of it. And this, if, as you can see, it takes me half of the thing, so a mirror would, would fit. See, you, I probably won't see you next week, so you'll have your shy here. Uh, but do look, the substance are really important. I said next Tuesday at 5, so uh, make sure you can. It's going to be two sessions of substance, and that's the main point to, to work with it. And it's a new software, so maybe just even to get used to the uh, uh, interface, uh, it's really worth it. Why is this so important, the, the layout? This is the, the killer, especially in engines or games. Now, we're working for mobile, so it's a different uh, story. But let's see if we're working for a AAA game. Every, to have an empty space like this here is a waste of space. You know, it's just a map that will be, of course you have some, but you're trying to get as much optimized, even to parts that you would stick things inside here. Depends on the model you have. Now, we are, uh, we are going to loop it so we have doubles, and then we're going to have all the props. So these spaces will be exactly for the gun here. We can have a separate object, but still put it on the same UV map. It'll just have uh, this. Le except this b uh, b part of the wing, the back wing, the which we didn't do. We just did it easily to show. This is the automatic way to realign, and every time, if you click uh, here, it will try a different, although this one is happy with this. Uh, but it should try different configurations. From my ex I think this works great for a start, but the, the most uh, optimized UVs I got to were manu manual, because you know, still the computer, he thinks he's organizing, but you might have the, the, the easiest tricks uh, to where to put things. So I can just go here to shell, and I will say, you know what, this one, if I rotate it and fit it, it's kind of like this jig jigsaw puzzles that you have to fit everything into a square. That's exactly what it is. But we are not doing that yet because we still, we made half of the plane, the UVs. Save your scene by default so it doesn't crash. Um, what I'm going to do now is once I have it like this, I'm going to take this whole plane and mesh mirror. And you see the color changed. Now this is the, because I have the, the preview of the color. This means I have overlapping UVs on top of each other, which is not good unless we wanted it. If I want to separate them, they are separated, I can just go into UV, and again, not marquee select, I just select one point, uh, shift to, uh, sorry, control to shell, and I'll move it out of the way. So you see now I separated the two, and now I see that this one is flipped. I will do the same here, to shell, and move it out of the way. And the same thing with the plane, to shell, and move it out of the way. What, the only thing more that I want to do with this, except uh, uh, is to connect the plane both sides. So it's m we're saving another mesh. Now we need to think where we want to connect it. So two options. We have our seam on top and we have our seam on bottom. Now usually you connect it where people see it the most. That should be connected. And another point is that here it's going to be a bit distorted. Uh, now we, since we're going to see the plane flying at us, and then we're going to see it probably from the bottom when it comes out. I would prefer to connect the bottom also because it's a straight line, which is very nice for us. So the same as we did before. We're going to first uh, take this, guys, because they're all red. We said we don't like red. We're going to select them all. Now, I if you see, I selected and I missed one out here. I can just select like this and go Control to Shell just to make sure that I have everything. Then I will use this flip vertical, I guess, to flip them like this. And I'm going to just select one uh, UV from the plane, just for easier selection, control to shell, so I can just select the plane. And you see I'm putting it on top, uh, on the bottom here. And let's hope, yeah, you see they're corresponding nicely. This, uh now I could also stitch it all the way up to here. It should work actually. If I do all this, it'll combine it in the middle. We'll have stretching. Maybe I can just do from here to let's say here. So I just selected this straight line, although I could probably connect all those, not, a, not such a big deal. So once I have this connected, uh, I'm not using the ones that are going, although I can connect them, and I can connect everything actually, but then I'll have more stretching. I don't want stretching, I just want to combine it into one object, a uh, UV, and then I, I just selected this row here that is pretty much 
straight, shift, move UVs, and so. And then you see it's connected, I have one object. You see, and it's connected uh, on the bottom, and it's got stretching, or what's going on? If, for example, I would continue and select those, it's also not a bad thing to do. It depends what you're going for. Now, the unfold, and this I always have a problem with. If I go unfold, You say, okay, remove the pack, and then it doesn't go. You see, now it just spread out these ones. So you have to make sure to take the pack out, and then it just spreads it out. And if you see, this is already nicer. This is good enough. I, c I, I can go, you know, it depends how you want. This can be good enough for our texturing. I can also say, oh, I'm going to connect these like I did before and, un and unpack them, unfold them, so they're more decent. Uh, this will also work. And the last thing is, like, let's say, okay, we are checking. There's no major stretching. If there is, we need to fix it. Here, I do have some problems. Maybe I should stitch them, but it's not. This just means that it's not the same, you see, because I don't have this connection here. It's, uh, it's just not going to be smooth. So we can do it both ways. Otherwise, I think it looks pretty okay. And then our main task left, and this is already, uh, let's save it. You could work this out more, okay, those little wings we didn't do, but the main point is, after I save, I can use this now to realign them, and you see it made everything smaller to fit it inside. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not sure I'm so happy with this, how we did it automatically, let's go undo. Now, what I would do is, uh, this is now, wha all we have left to do is now just move this, uh, I can even take the color out, I'm not caring, is just to move this and starting to, everything has to fit in this square. Ah, this one worked really nice. Okay. See, this is already quite optimized. Okay, those wings are not correct, but you see it fit me quite okay. And there is space between them here. This might be a bit too narrow. Depends on our texture resolution. But this should work. Now these are already very decent UVs except the, the, this wings for what we need for our, our engine. And, and the only thing, let's say if you weren't working, and this is the last thing I just want to show, if you weren't, you're working in Photoshop, for example, and you're not working on the engine uh, or another image editing, uh, you just have polygons You're with me is the last piece of info for today. Uh, polygons, UV snapshot. Now you have to be in object mode, not in faces or UV mode. And if you see here, it gives me where it's going to, it's already in my project because I have an organized project in images and this is called out UV, which is fine for me. This is important. This is your texture resolution. They're always two, five, six, five, uh, by duplicates, 1048, 2000, no, 1024, 2048, 4096. So we uh, will do a 2K texture, 2048. Most likely in the engine when we'll work, we won't use two, 2K texture, we'll use a 1K texture, but always better to have a bit bigger texture. Even if you're doing for rendering, uh, now Substance works a bit different. You can always increase the texture resolution it, and it rebuilds it. For Photoshop, I would recommend you, even if you know you're going to do a 512 texture at the end, I would still recommend you to have higher info, uh, level on Photoshop. Let's just do this because this is quite, uh, so you'll be able to work on it. The resolution, image format is fine. UV range 0 to 1, this is, uh, should be good. Because otherwise this is 0 to 1, from here to here. 0 to 1. If you do more, it's, it takes you more. But this is, we just need a square map. Polygons all the way to the bottom, UV snapshot. And then when it opens, this is the size of the texture it will take out. This is where it will take it out. It's called uh, out UV. Um, I might even call it plain out UV. And I will usually recommend you to work with 248 or 496.
Now, there's something with these numbers and why they have to be square and equal. It's because how memory works and how program. I don't know if it's that relevant today, but it's just uh, faster on the memory. It is, yeah. It's everything by duplicates, yeah. So, if you want to, and you have Photoshop at home or Coral, you could take this UV map, paint whatever you want on it, and then the only thing, maybe just to show how to do with materials, and it's the same thing. If I take this plane now, and I will go, I already have a Lambert con connected. Um, I'll just delete the history. You see, I have a checkered already. But let's say if I'll change this. Break connection. File. Um, I will actually put the UV. You see how cool it is? Because it's alpha channel as well. <laughs> so I get now the whole uh, plane as uh, as the UVs because it's uh, as a wireframe. But it's not. It's a transparency. If because of my material, if I go to it, if I break the transparency, I just see the UVs. Now, what's nice about this is where I, where where I can touch. Now you already see the stretching here. Things that should be worked on, but. This will be in Photoshop. In uh, we could have stitches together. We can uh, try this, but in substance, this doesn't really make a difference. It it should be able to handle that. If not, we we will put it. We chose to connect it here on the bottom because we'll see it. And you see, you know what? It maybe it is good to connect those ones as well because uh, there's always a little blur on the on the edge of the pixel. This won't be shown so much, but this is pretty okay. This is because it's a line on one pixel. It it blurs it. We need two lines. There is a way to to offset. It will always be if you have something, but we won't have something there. And then, you know, this is pretty much, uh, you know what we can do also. Let's see if they still have it. Uh, 